what was it like during like the heyday of obviously the CKY videos were the first, but that didn't really like that. That kind of kicked off C or Viva La Bam, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Viva La Bam. What was it like in the heyday of filming that shit? And like, I know I heard I heard his interview on that guy Cowhead the other yeah. day, and he was talking about like all the money they had, and just like every week they had an insane budget, and like flying all over the world, and just coming up with the craziest shit ever. It sounded like it was too good to be true yeah for you guys. it was really um it was intimidating for me very overwhelming because the very so, first said, like 300 grand a week or something i think yeah mtv's budget was just was stupid it was stupid but the very first episode that i appeared in was um where they demolished don vito's house and they like <laughs> threw trash through the the window uh, it, it just like really demolished it and i I had just gotten off a bus from Baltimore, and at this point, I'm like clean, but by force, not by choice. Yeah. And I, I've burnt all my options there, and I'm living in this like halfway house. I'm like the only white kid in this halfway house, and it's in the hood. And I was really just so confused about me and who I was. Like I had no idea or self confidence. Yeah, it's got to be a weird situation to be in. And then I'm thrusted to there. I show yeah. up. It's this whole set. There is the cast. There, yeah. it's, it's just shit everywhere. Money, money everywhere. Money and... filming and all these professionals. And Bam's like the man. And I remember him as being this like little skate rat. And and I wanted to be a part of it. And I knew Dunn from then. I yeah. knew Rab. I, I knew all those guys but not in this light. And they like wanted me to be a part of it, but I was just like such an out, I was just, at that point in time, I was just such a stranger in my own skin, trying to figure out who the fuck let me in and yeah. why. Mm. And all I wanted was a release, which was like to get high and, and that wasn't allowed. So it was just this struggle. Yeah. Um, and and then the, the producers, they didn't really want me in it because I just was like this odd, like, person that mm -hmm. didn't really fit their storylines but bam kept insisting that i right. be in it and again we talk about all this in the streets of baltimore we really get in the thick of it but um he, he'd like write me in scenes and then they'd cut me out when it made the editing and just wouldn't and and, and that makes me even more depressed and like yeah. just this this weird little redheaded stepchild that no one was accepting on their end like bam and rab and rake and and dunn and all those they love me mm -hmm. but um and then finally, I'll never forget it. The one day broke where like I I said something and it was like comical gold, and they all darted, started laughing, and it, the cast, the crew, and like it was like the best day you of my life. Moment. And yeah. I and right there, and then so that paired with the fact that I was Bam's best friend, and and I could do no wrong, right? And now at this point, I was allowed to drink and and do blow, but I couldn't do like any downers. Cause then, like, that's not cool. I'd steal your wallet. Uppers are good. It's yeah, that's so so acceptable. And like, life of the party. When I'm doing yeah. downers, I'm gonna steal your shit. I'm gonna lie. <laughs> I'm gonna disappear to Baltimore for like weeks. I'll possibly die in your living room. <laughs> it's kind of frowned upon. Yeah. yeah, a little bit. But um, and throughout this time, I'm starting to kind of feel who I am a little bit more. Direction. I'd spent more time there, and um, I'm kind of just finding my way. And but I'm just becoming such a major pain in the ass to the production team because like Bam would want me to do funny shit. They couldn't control me because I wasn't on payroll. I'm Bam's best friend. He's you never. Care, yeah, I'm careless. like fuck you. Like yeah. I walk out like naked with a heart on, jerking off. If that's what like you I had did no that for use one to scene. any of those guys, but Bam just brought you along, so they had to deal with yes. you. Yes. <laughs> so, but it's funny. I I say this one line, and it was during one of the episodes, and and we do this thing, and it's called like Maniac Pool, and it's me, Dunn, Rab. Uh, Ray Rake might be in there, Deco, and we're just like it's a mosh pit, but playing pool, and they're all getting ready to fly to Europe, and uh, and they ask me if I can go, and I'm like I can't, I have warrants, and and everyone just starts dying, but it was really the truth at the time. Yeah. So the producer lady, I'm not gonna say her name, she pulls me aside after, and she's like, "Look, Novak, it's inevitable that like y you're now gonna become a, a a character on this show, but we can't control you, so." we're going to pay you. And now that we pay you, you have to listen to us. <laughs> and I'm like, deal. Yeah, 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 perfect. <laughs> but again, most people are like, wow, that's a really smart strategy to yeah. end up on the payroll and make a living out of this. No, I just yeah. dumb my way into that. Oh, <laughs> Which is anything good in my life really today. It's just like not done 
you know, by my doings. <laughs> where were you guys when uh, the, the, there's a story where Bam was like, you're like, I need some money. And Bam's like, go shove a rock up your ass and I'll pay you. Yeah, that was in Europe. That was in Europe? <laughs> that was in Europe. That was, that, that, you know, that paired with many other things that I had shoved up my my uh, anus for a lot of years while traveling to, to you know, get under the radar of police not detecting what I was trying to consume <laughs> which were narcotics um, ultimately led to me having like this hemorrhoid surgery because like mm. my, my, I just blew my anus out <laughs> I, I, I say a lot of, a of things terms. and even saying that I'm like dude this just sound, uh, it just rolled off the tongue wrong <laughs> <laughs> not I, don't think you for. I don't think there's a more self-deprecating thing you can say about yourself. <laughs> well, it's it, it's it's one of those magical things. Name to me another male who's not a homosexual who's had his anus blown out. Right. Not many fit who that. Who brags about it on podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> could know, be one on one. It's all perspective. It could be worse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, you got the most use out of it. I did. Um, and, but again, these are, right? And the reason why, because this this generally wouldn't be stuff that I'd want to like really like focus on because I'm, I'm a, a very changed, different man today. But all perspective, these are the things that I personally enjoy talking about because it gives depth and weight to the right. story, the 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 transformation that's taken place as a direct result of me kind of you know reaching out and asking for help which is what i'm all about today is helping people who are where i once was mm. so you know those defects have become my assets right that poison has become my medicine that i can now share with countless others um so it's given me purpose it's given me drive it's given me meaning it's it's given me love right it's taught me compassion empathy sympathy um and it all spawned from skateboarding. Mm -hmm. Really did. So you guys were in Europe when that happened? Yeah. And then didn't you have to go to the hospital after mm -hmm. that? I did. I went to the hospital. Because you guys were on... Oh, you. Oh, that was when he had the band, right? Uh-huh. Fuck Face Unstoppable. Face Unstoppable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I was, I was the most important person in the band, but I, I didn't even play any musical instruments. I wasn't even in the band. <laughs> Again, being his best friend, traveling his kind of form of entertainment uh, he used to say I was like his walking television they, they couldn't really like <laughs> kick me off the tour yeah until and, yeah and then they put me on the tour like opening for them as Pill Collins <laughs> which is a whole other <laughs> thing so then I, I had some relevance to the uh, tour at that point oh but we have all that footage so again all of that footage we have and uh, you know I have a documentary that will be coming out that unbeknownst to me Sick, or man. us has been in production mm. since the CKY days. So that's like really? 20 right. some I mean, years. Have we have the actual yeah, real time footage. footage. So everything that I'm talking about for the majority of this episode, we have the actual footage too. Oh wow. And um, so cool. We, we, you know, I'm, I, we are putting it out. So we have complete creative control. Um, it's in production editing now. Joe Franz, who filmed the CKYs, yeah. he's doing this project he is, with is me. Is he really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dude. So when we're done, like then we'll look at how we're going to, uh, you know, the avenues in which to, to release it. Mm -hmm.